Good morning, Aquarium Online Academy friends. Welcome to another of our classes. We're going to be talking today about otters and conservation. Now, my name is James. I work in the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I have Jenna helping out in the studio to show you all the lovely otter-related things over here. And Carrie is on question control. If you have questions, if you're viewing live today, Friday at 10, go ahead and text us at 562 286 one eight three eight now remember text rates apply if you're one of our younger viewers make sure you have permission to text us questions you can also email us so check out the email down there if you need a really big question answered or you're not watching during our live presentation email us at live at lbaop.org and our educators will make sure to help answer your questions well let's get started with talking about sea otters what do we know about sea otters Maybe you can share with somebody around you. You can text things you know about sea otters to carry. Let's see if we can figure out what we know about these really interesting creatures. Hmm. Did you say mammal? That's good. That's good. All right. What else, what else do we see? What else do we know about them? Hmm. They are very cute. You're right. Do you see their ears? This is always something fun I try to have my friends look for, is their ears. Ours are up here. They're, theirs are kind of tucked down. Now, the cool thing about sea otter ears is they can move them. They kind of tuck them in and down when they're diving to help when they're swimming around. Because, they, you know, like us, they don't want water in their ears. So they can actually move where their external earlobes, their pinnae, are on their body. Can you move your ears? Maybe a little bit, maybe not too much. Ours are really good at moving their ears. So that means they have a really good sense of sound too. Underwater, they can hear very well. Do you think sea otters can smell underwater? Hmm. Well, let's think about it. We're mammals, just like the sea otter. Should I go swimming in the ocean, stick my head underwater and try to smell the seaweed? No, they don't smell underwater because what, what happened? You'd snort in all the water and that's bad for you because you have lungs. You're not a fish. You don't have gills. Now, Aiden asked or said that they chew on wood. <gasps> there is an aquatic mammal that does that. It's called a beaver. Now, sea otters might be furry and a little smelly like a beaver, but they don't chew on wood. They chew on a lot of other things, mostly just their food. Beavers are going to cut off branches and tree bases so that they can help build a dam in a river or a pond. Otters only go out into the ocean, maybe the very, very entrance of a river, but they really don't ever go upriver because their food is not up there. They need to stay out in the ocean where their food is at. So good observations, good things to talk about. But we need to talk more about than just the otter. We should focus a little bit on their habitat too. Let's go back to the video we were watching when we first started the class. This is going to be a kelp forest habitat. Moved too fast, Jen wasn't ready to switch back. That's okay, we like to do those kinds of things around here. Keep you on your toes. So a kelp forest habitat, have you seen kelp before? Besides the video we showed you? Maybe walking around on the beach or maybe one of our live webcams, you've seen some replica kelp in there. Or at a different zoo or aquarium, you might have seen kelp. This right here is kelp. That is a cabazon playing in the bubbles. But the kelp, the kelp can grow all along our coastline here. Kelp is an algae, or we also might call it a seaweed. So all the things you think of as seaweed are algae. Now, sea grasses are true plants. Algae are different. Algae can do photosynthesis all over their bodies, absorb nutrients and exchange gas all over their bodies, and they don't have true roots. They have a holdfast that holds the body to a rock. So the reason that this kelp is not blowing away in the bubbles like the cabazone does is because it's anchored to the floor. What other things do we notice in this kelp forest habitat? Now, this is one of our live kelp spaces. We only have a couple of exhibits where we put live algae like this in because it takes a lot of care. The water has to be moving around a lot, like you can see. So we need a lot of flow, but it needs a lot of light. 
And it's, we have to make sure that it's getting nutrients too. So in the ocean, all those nutrients make the water kind of cloudy. So if we wanted a lot of a lot of kelp in here, we'd have to make sure there's a lot of other stuff and they make the water a little cloudy. You couldn't see everybody. So we usually have replica kelp, but this is one of the few spaces we get to put live kelp in. Have you seen anybody else that might live in a kelp forest habitat? I noticed some of these anemones down here in the corner and over here. We have, ooh, I think there's a couple sea stars back there. That cabazone will come back over here, not to mention that fish over there. Now, some of the animals that you can't see because they're hiding just outside of the camera are animals called wolf eels. They're eel-shaped, but they're not eels. It works. Don't worry. So there's a lot of variety in a kelp forest habitat. We think of Southern California habitats as being eh, like, not very diverse, not very colorful. Oh, reefs get all the color. <laughs> well, that's not right. Kelp forest habitats get a lot. So you can see that we have a lot of red algae growing down here. We have a lot of anemones, and these are all native species. It's not like we transplanted these from somewhere else to try and make it look like something it's not. If you went diving or snorkeling in a kelp forest, you could see all of this. Or you could actually see more than this, too. This is just a small snapshot of the kelp forest variety. So if you were out diving in the kelp, this is more like what we'd see. Lots of kelp. You can see that it's not super duper clear like our exhibits are. We need everybody to be able to see everything when they visit the aquarium, so the exhibits are really clear. Out in the ocean, the water is a little more cloudy. And that's okay. And here's some other friends that live in the kelp forest habitat. So it's a very diverse space. But are these sea otters? No, they have the word sea in their name, but they are not sea otters. They are sea lions. Mm, what does a sea lion sound like? Not anything like an otter. You, I bet you could make your best sea lion impersonation for us, though. Let me hear. Jen's doing hers. She's a very small sea lion in this case. Very quiet sea lion. Sea lions are not quiet. And they are, they are stinky. But not, not like a sea otter. They, they are way stinkier. Sea otters belong to a group called the mustelids. Mustelids are things like... Badgers, wolverines, weasels, and the sea otters. And while the sea otter is not actually angry, this picture makes it look especially like, ah! You want to make your best sea... So we did the sea lion impersonation. Make your best sea otter face. Ah! It's like super villain status. Like, ah! Well, sea otters, they are very cute, but they are kind of mischievous. They are very smart. But also, they can be dangerous. Remember, they're related to wolverines. Not too many people have a pet badger or wolverine. So you really don't want a pet sea otter. Sea otters are a very special animal. So we talked about all this diversity. But the sea otter gets a very special status. They're called a keystone species. Have you heard that before, too? Well, a keystone species is really important to that habitat. That means if there were none of them out there, no sea otters, the ecosystem is not healthy at all. As long as there's at least one or two, the ecosystem is incredibly healthier. And the reason is because of how much they can eat. Now, in some of the other cases, a keystone species might be something that is vital to the balance of everybody else, or you know, like you need grasses in a grassland. That's kind of an important thing. But in a kelp forest, we need the, the sea otter, because otherwise, it doesn't turn into a kelp forest. So what is this relationship? How are they so important? Well, let's think about the things that it does and it eats. So sea otters are mammals like us. They do have to stay warm. Their body has to stay the same temperature all the time, but they don't have a blubber layer like those sea lions you saw. So if there's no blubber layer, no fat layer and jacket inside the body to help warm them up, they need to be warming up from the outside too. So their fur is the thickest fur of any animal on the planet. They spend a lot of time grooming their fur, making sure that it is healthy and that there's nothing stuck in there. And in some cases, the grooming is to help put air inside the fur. So I have a sample of some actual otter fur, not from ours. This was given to us by the Department of Wildlife. And their fur is extremely thick. We're going to go over to the document camera in a second so we can look at it. But their fur 
is what helps keep them warm. It's so thick that if you and six to nine of your friends all got together and shaved the tops of your heads off, squished all your hair down to about a square inch of space, about the size of a quarter, that's as thick as their fur is in terms of number and density. Now the actual hair is very thin, but there's so many hairs that it keeps them very, very warm. So let's head over to the document camera. Let's check out sea otter fur. So here's our camera. Here's my hand. Here is otter fur. So I'm gonna try and lay it so that we can zoom in on their fur. Zoom, 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 zoom. We gotta turn the brightness down a little bit. Yeah. Ooh, all right, let's scooch this over a little bit farther. Focus. And there. That's pretty cool. Now, to help you get an idea of how far we've zoomed in, that's my finger. I cut my nails specifically for this part of the day. I don't want you to see my gross fingernails on, on camera that large. So their fur is extremely thin. That's how you can fit up to a million hairs in a square inch of space. That is really thick. So there's no blubber, extremely thick fur. And when they groom themselves and they do this thing, they're getting air trapped inside. Just like my vest jacket traps an air layer against my body, it helps keep me warmer. Fur does that on all animals, but it's very, very effective on an otter. Now the other thing that helps keep them surviving in terms of their cold habitat is their fast metabolism. So their thick fur is number one. The other thing is going to be what they eat. So we're gonna have to zoom way back out and I'm going to show you a few examples of things they eat. Tell me if you recognize any of the things I'm showing you. So you can text your observations and your questions into the studio. Mm -hmm. All right, I have all of my otter food artifacts ready. Hmm, what do, these, what do these things all seem to share in common? They might be pokey. Are there any of them extremely squishy animals? No, not really. Crabs are not squishy. Sea stars are not super squishy. Scallops and clams and abalone, definitely not squishy. The least squishy one is probably the urchin. You try to squish them, it squishes you back and you get hurt. The spines of an urchin are pretty dangerous. Let's take a look at an otter eating some stuff. So they have to catch this food. And what they do is they have to dive to get it. So these things aren't freely swimming around and they can just grab it as it comes by. Two paws, always two paws. Just like that. Now our otters will shell their own shrimp and one of our otters will actually save all the shells for like an after dinner dessert. Is that what you do with shrimp? No? You're missing out. Sea otters do that. And that's just kind of a behavior that some of them picked up. Others will kind of eat the shrimp whole. But a few of our otters will, will shell all their shrimp and just save it for later. One of them you will instill steal the other the sea otters uh, shrimp shells just to eat them on their own. So when they're feeding, they have to be up at the surface. Notice our sea otter is not in the depth of the water to feed. So they'll come up to the surface to feed after they've caught their food you know, out in the wild, and then they lay on their back just like this, like that one's doing, and they will hold their food on their chest. Now, if their food has a shell, like this sea urchin does, well, what's step one to eat a sea urchin? Step one's already been done to this urchin because after it passed away, they just all fell off. Step one is removing all the spines. So otters will pick off a bunch of spines from a section of the shell. And then they'll take another shell or rock that they've grabbed from the sea floor that they like to store in their armpit and they'll crack it open. Here's an otter hanging out with a crab. So they even catch things that can fight back like crabs. And they'll bring them up to the surface and they'll crack them open and they'll feed while laying on their backs. So all these food items are important. 
Now, remember we said they have a fast metabolism. They eat a lot of food. Do you think you could eat more food per day than a sea otter does? Ooh, that's a big challenge. I mean, I got a big appetite, but otters are kind of intense with how much they eat. One 60-pound otter could eat up to 15 pounds of food or even more per day to stay alive. That's a lot of food. Let's try and equate that to something more in our size range. Maybe your 60 pounds, 15 pounds of food is like a small pound or a small bag of like dog or cat food, okay? Well, what if you're about a 100 pound person? That's 20 to 30 pounds of food per day. What if you're one of the adults watching? You're about a 160 pound person. That's up to 40 pounds of food or more per day. So 40 pounds, you ever go to the pet store? Those big bags of dog food on the bottom shelf? That's a 40 pound bag. If you were 160 pounds, you'd have to eat one of those per day, every day, to survive. That much volume and weight of food. Whew, that's a lot of food. They constantly will be foraging out in the ocean. Their bodies release a lot of body heat as a byproduct of eating. So metabolism is how fast we break down food, how fast our body's burning calories to do all the things it's supposed to do. If you have a high metabolism, like a sea otter, you usually eat more per day because that's what you need to keep homeostasis, keep the standard level, keep everything at, at even. If you have a low metabolism, you probably would eat less per day because your body's not doing as many things. And that's okay because different species have different metabolism rates, even different people. Somebody sitting next to you might have a different metabolism and that's fine. So each otter is gonna have a little bit different diet. So not only do we have to feed them a lot, we have to monitor their diet all day, every day here. We record how much they're eating. Out in the ocean, nobody's recording how much they eat, but there's an effect that we can see. When sea otters are out in the ocean, they could be eating hundreds of pounds of food per day of sea stars, clams, mussels, shrimp, crabs. There's a lot of stuff that they eat. I think maybe even an octopus or two at some time. I don't know how many know how to do that because an octopus definitely can fight back. But the thing about that is that they're eating so much it actually leaves open space on the sea floor. Think of it this way. What if you never took anything out of the refrigerator? Could you pack more food in? You kind of reach a limit, right? Well, something's got to eat the food to be able to allow space for more food to be there. So when they eat more sea stars, more clams, more abalone, other of those animals can grow or move into that area. So it opens up available space for things to live on the seafloor. Now, if they're not around, the seafloor gets pretty, pretty busy with one particular animal, especially. Sea otters love to eat urchins. What do urchins love to eat? Mm, this stuff. Urchins, are the urchins like flying up like, ah, oh, attack the, no. Remember, these are not swimming around the sea otter has to find its food typically from the sea floor so an urchin will walk up to the base of this seaweed chew off the hold fast and then the seaweed will float away well because it doesn't have roots like a tree the seaweed is still alive so the seaweed's like peace out whatever this is fine bye bye it just drifts away but now we don't have this hanging out in our coastline Seaweed like this, giant kelp, can only grow from maybe 100 to maximum 200 feet of depth. If it's 200 feet deep, it's actually pretty clear water. It's probably not going to be the healthiest. So there's just enough light between 1 to 200 feet that it could, it could start to survive. And then it can grow in the right conditions, the best amount of sunlight, the best amount of nutrients, the right temperatures, 2 to 3 feet per day. So this stuff can grow 2 to 3 feet per day. So it can regrow quickly, unless there's a lot of these sitting around. So if urchins are hanging out, urchins are pretty ravenous. They have a big diet and appetite, just like the sea otters do. So they will walk around, mow down all the kelp, and then we get what's called a kelp barren. So there's too many sea urchins, because there's no sea otters, and then they've eaten the kelp away. And what else relies on that kelp? Let's think. Let's bring up another kelp forest habitat to show you. And let's think about who all relies on the kelp being there. While we're doing that, let's answer some questions. 
Our Lady of Lords third grade class is asking how long do they stay under the water before they have to come up for air? Great question, because if they have to dive for food and they're mammals, they breathe air like we do, there's a time limit. Some animals, like seals, can dive for 30 to 60 minutes or more. Depends on the kind of seal. How long can you hold your breath? I'm not even as good as a sea otter. Sea otters can't hold their breath for very long at all. Maybe three to five minutes. Three to five minutes. That's it. They're not long-term divers, because all I got to do is go down and, oh, I want that. And I want that. Then I'll take one of these. And they go back to the surface. And then they can eat, and they go back down if, they have to, if they're still hungry. They still need to forage more. So that is kind of the pace of a sea otter. Three to five minute dives. How long can they be out of water? Also a good question. So if they need to dive to get to the food, but they can crawl out, how long does that take? Well, sea otters technically could be out as long as they need to be, because as, lo as long as they don't have to eat, they could be out of water. But remember, they have a really fast metabolism. They're going to warm up. The water helps balance that. So our sea otters here, we will put ice into the exhibit. We'll dump a huge tub of ice in there. And not only do they eat it for like just fun and to get some more water on their diet, they like to sleep on it. Do you want to sleep on a ice cube bed? Ooh, cozy. Well, their bodies are so warm, it's okay. Kind of helps keep them cool while they sleep if they want to sleep out of water. Otherwise, they sleep in the water too. So sea otters pretty much will spend almost their entire life in the water. Cool question. Concha is asking, if otters don't have a fat layer like seals, can some otters get fatter than others? Like some people get fatter than others. Concha, you're thinking really, really deeply. That is a cool question because they don't have a blubber layer like seals do, but they do have some body fat. So otherwise we wouldn't worry about if the otters overfed or, or were overfed in our exhibits, right? Because if they couldn't get fat, whew, man, that'd be, that'd be a nice life, right? I can eat whatever I want, don't ever gain weight. Well, they do gain some weight and we do have to monitor their health to make sure they're not overeating or undereating. We gotta find that right Goldilocks zone, that right balance of not too much, not too little. So yes, Concha, they could gain weight. Very interesting question. Here is a sea otter hanging out Two sea otters hanging out on the ice. And they, like I said, they, they'll sometimes just chew on it and eat it, play in the ice. One of the sea otters actually loves the ice so much, it'll jump into the ice bin if you don't dump it out fast enough. I think, I think that's Ollie or Maggie. I don't remember which one. Uh, not that one particularly. The one that jumps into the bin is, I think, Ollie or Maggie. And that's kind of the funny thing is that they have all these cool personalities, too. They're each one unique. So not only can you tell the difference between otters a little bit, but they have their own personalities, too. Pretty cool. Well, we have a few minutes left. There are still some questions coming in. So keep asking questions. But let's also talk about the conservation. We talked about why they're important. They need to be there to help balance the ecosystem. They are keystone species. They eat the sea urchins. They eat a bunch of other things, too. But what do we need to do? to help make sure that they stay in a, in a kelp forest habitat. Oh, cool question from uh, the third grade class from Our Lady of Lords. Do the whiskers serve a big purpose? It's not just to look handsome like me. <laughs> Actually, their whiskers are better than mine because their whiskers help sense their environment like a cat or a dog. So your dog or cat has whiskers like this. Actually, a lot of mammals do. And it helps them sense their environment. Like, we can feel the wind in our hair, right? But it's not like spidey sense. Like, whoa, danger's coming. They can sense pressure changes. They can sense changes in the water direction with their whiskers. And that helps them both avoid predators and find prey. Very good question. All right, let's go back to that blue cavern image. Blue cavern is another one of our kelp forest habitats here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Now, this is a replica kelp habitat but here's a lot of more diversity that you're going to see so if the kelp isn't here most of these fish won't be either the kelp acts as a nursery for lots of baby fish even commercial fishing so a lot of the fish that we might like that one that we might want to go out to the ocean and catch in large volumes and use as food for people the babies start in the kelp forest habitat so we need to make sure that not only is the kelp forest habitat healthy but so were the otters within them. So we need to make sure there are otters there. Now, 
sea otters have been protected for over a century by the Fur Treaties Act. So people used to hunt otters a lot to use their fur for themselves so that we could stay warm. They realized there's so few otters left and it's such a dangerous thing that they, they started protecting them over a century ago. And since then, we've also had the Marine Mammal Protection Act and, hello, <laughs> the Endangered Species Act. Those three things help protect otters in their habitat, along with marine protected areas, MPAs. California has the most extensive array of marine protected areas. So between all of these things, this habitat and that species are protected. And they've been able to recover from a census of about 50, I think 1910, 1911, maybe around there, to well over, I think, 3,000 just in southern or just in the California zone. So across the entire North Pacific habitat, their population was reduced a lot. So while we're talking about that, we want them to reproduce. Get out of the way, fish. They, we want them to reproduce a lot so there's enough otters for the habitat. So how do they reproduce? Well, they're mammals. There's male and female. The male and the female have to mate. And like a lot of, oh, we fast forwarded, okay. And, and like a lot of animals, mom will take care of the babies. Fish, they don't quite do that all the time. Mammals, sometimes both parents hang out and take care of the babies. But a lot of the time, you see mammals in, in their natural habitat, only the mom takes care of the babies. And that's how sea otters do it too. Shinja is asking, are otters social? Do they like to live by themselves? Actually, they'll hang out in groups. And it's so cute. They will actually wrap each other up in the kelp when they sleep so they don't drift away from each other. Or they hold, like, arms. So just like my sea otter friend here, they will kind of lock arms and lay in the kelp so they don't drift away from each other. Oh, sea otter nap. So they do like to cuddle with each other. They are social because they will hang out in groups, but they'll also live on their own. They do like to be social, but they also like to be by themselves quite a bit. Uh, what other animals do they work, play, or get along with? Remember, they're a mustelid. They don't get along with most other things. <laughs> so they might be social with each other, but they're really not going to go like, ooh, I like sea lions today. I'm going to go hang out with the sea lion. They don't do that. There's a competition for food in some cases. So if they're trying to hang out with certain mammals, those other species might be trying to eat the same stuff. So they're not really going to socialize with them. As far as I know, sea otters really haven't been seen truly socializing with other species in their environment, except just other sea otters. So cool question from Shinja. Well, we've run through our time today. Don't forget, if you still have more questions about sea otters and conservation efforts, you can go to our email, live at lbaop.org, and you can learn more. Now, the aquarium does have some pretty cool information on our website. We will be participating in a program to help with otter surrogacy. So check that out on our website, aquariumofpacific.org, so you can learn how we are playing our part in keeping otters healthy in their environment. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your Friday.